in order for you to understand the power of Twitter ads and Twitter as a platform, it's important that we understand the dynamic customer journey, how a user goes about becoming aware of competing products and services, how they make their decision and compare competing alternatives, where they buy and how they buy from and what's influenced them to make that final purchase. To understand where Twitter fits in this mix, we must first understand the traditional mental models of marketing. And there are four key stages. The first stage is the stimulus stage. Now, this model was originally produced by Procter & Gamble in 2005. It was then developed further by Google and Shopper Sciences back in 2010, 2011. And I'm going to cover off these four key areas for you now. The first stage is the stimulus stage. This is where, as us as marketers and advertisers, would create pieces of stimulus to raise awareness of our products and services. These pieces of stimulus may be things such as TV or radio ads. It could be outdoor billboard ads, direct mail, banner ads online, and yes, of course, Twitter ads as well. Once a user is made aware of a product or service, they will then take a certain amount of time to do some pre-shopping activity in many cases. This is where the user would research the products and services available to them. They would compare competing alternatives. They may look for reviews or coupons or may even ask their audiences and their friends and family on their social networks for more information. It's at this zero moment of truth, the pre-shopping stage, where most users are convinced of a particular product or service to use and use right now. The first moment of truth is when the consumer is at the shelf, they're in store, they've walked into the dealership, they're just about to press the buy now button on that e-commerce site. And the second moment of truth is all about the experience the consumer has once they've bought a product or service. Now, let me just break down these four stages for you, and I'll give you quite an easy um, explanation of this with the automotive industry. So let's say, for example, you see a TV advertisement this evening for the new Audi A4. You realize that you're in the market for perhaps buying a new car, but just because you've seen that TV ad, it does not mean that you directly walk straight into the dealership and book a test drive or order a brochure or, or even buy the car straight away. What will happen once you've seen that TV ad, invariably you will go online and start researching how suitable the Audi A4 would be for your needs. So just to give you an example of some of the things that you may look at at the zero moment of truth in this instance, you may look for competing information for different models. So how does the Audi A4 stack up against the BMW 3 Series, for example? You may look for car configurators to see what options and add-ons you can add to the base model. You may look for professional blogger opinions and look at articles on sites such as What Car or Top Gear. You may look for peer review, so people who own an Audi A4, what are they saying in some of the forums and online chat rooms? You may look for images of the Audi A4, the interior, the exterior. You may look for videos. You may even be looking for dealer locations. What we're saying here is at the zero moment of truth, the consumer gathers so much information that very often the zero moment of truth stage is one of the most influential stages in that journey. Next, at the first moment of truth, you would walk into the dealership fully armed with all of your research and say to that car salesman, I'm interested in the Audi A4, I want the two litre TDI, I want it with these extras, I've found I can buy it for $20,000 at these locations, if you can do it for me for less, I'll do the deal right now. Then you'll take that car home, have a great experience with it, have a poor experience with it, either way, you are more likely now to provide the experience you have for feedback and research for the next person when they're going through their zero moments of truth. If, for example, you used a number of sites to gather your information in the first place when researching your car purchase, you will very often now share that experience you have with your new car on the same places and platforms and websites as where you gathered the information in the first place. 
being able to understand the zero moment of truth model, the moments of truth model, really helps us understand where Twitter ads and Twitter as a platform can be used across each of these different stages. It's important that we understand this because if we have got, depending on what our objectives for using Twitter ads are, will very often depend on the type of tweet that's created, the offer, the incentive, the promotion that we're mentioning, whether we're looking to get people to download uh, an application or submit data and various other different ways in which we can go about using Twitter ads. In the next lecture, we'll look at directly at how Twitter impacts each of these four key moments in today's dynamic customer journey.